Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today's card is a bridge fold card, and it's just a simple one to make. We're gonna do a little bit of sponging, and we're gonna use the Welcoming Woods stamp set along with the Peaceful Cabin. The Cabin in the Woods just goes together perfectly. So this quick little card starts with a card base. I'm using Early Espresso, and we're going to be having it to be four and a quarter by eight. So then we're gonna take our eight inch side and we're gonna put it up at the top of our trimmer. Now we're gonna score it at one and a quarter, two and a half, five and a half, and six and three quarters. All of those measurements are on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. If you look under the YouTube description, it says visit my blog here. If you just press that link, it takes you right over to cindyleebdesigns.com. I have all the products and all additional photos and some little tidbits there. So, as I said, we're going to score this at one and a quarter using our lighter blade here. So always stick that dark blade at the top so you don't get mixed up there. One and a quarter, and then we're going to go to two and a half. And then we're gonna go over to five and a half and six and three quarters, or you can do it the easy way and just flip your paper the whole way around so the other eight inch side is at the top and you can do that one and a quarter again and two and a half. Then you just have to remember those two measurements there for this bridge fold. Alrighty, so we're gonna pop this back in here and the bridge fold is going to be folded this way and then it can go into your card and it's going to measure five and a half when it's flat okay so what we're going to do is now decorate these two end panels here and the inside panel here now i decided to go ahead and use whisper white as my base for doing my sponging on Okay, so I'm gonna pull out a piece of scratch paper here. Let's find, okay, here's a piece here because we're gonna be going a little bit off of the, the card base. And I chose Daffodil Delight. Well, I started with, as you can see here, I started with the Balmy Blue, went into Daffodil, and then went into, I used Cajun Craze down at the bottom. So just kind of start doing that. So I'm gonna actually start with my balmy blue up at the top. So I'm just going to open up my balmy blue ink pad and I'm going to get some ink on it. And then I'm going to start off of my page and come on to it. Okay. We have got great blending brushes, but I already had these before we started carrying them. And so I tend to still use them. And because it's blue, I know I'm doing blue. And these blending brushes are a lot easier to work with than I think sponging. They give more of a soft sponging look. And as you can see, I like to be able to see the ink coming up to the edges, but don't start right in the middle because it tends to then make marks there. Okay, so that was my balmy blue. I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna bring over my Daffodil Delight. And as you can see on this card, especially when you're looking at the video, it really jumps out at you. We live on a lake, so I get a lot of beautiful, beautiful views in the morning and the evening. I'm constantly posting them on Facebook. Look at this beautiful tapestry that God painted this morning. <laughs> so now we're just putting in some Daffodil there. I'll set that aside and then I'm going to bring in my Cajun. I did do some pumpkin pie but I ended up liking the Cajun a little better and so I'm going to get some ink on here and I'm definitely going to go off my page before I bring that Cajun in there. Luckily this needs um, re-inked. It's not as juicy as um, I would technically like it if I was stamping but as I opened it, I thought, oh, this is perfect for this card because I don't want too much ink on it anyhow. And then I'm just gonna kind of blend those colors into each other, that yellow in the daffodil and that 
rusty color in the Cajun. There we go. And then you can see the as it makes a gradient up towards the uh, yellow to the blue, it makes a little bit of a greenish color. So we are going to close up these ink pads so I don't end up making more of a mess with, um, oh no, we're not gonna do that because you know what? I'm gonna put on the back of the card a little bit of fun, okay? We're gonna end up, we're gonna put a little bit of that fun on the back where we're gonna write because you can write over this ink. So we're gonna do that little bit of light sponging on the back of the card where we can write our sentiment. And then we're gonna put a little yellow. Oh gosh, kind of sounded like Bob Ross there, huh? Gonna bring in a little bit of yellow, some happy yellow. Yes, and then we're gonna ground out the bottom with our Cajun. Cajun, there we go. Okay, and my Cajun was this pink one, so then we're gonna just put a little, and see, you'll be able to write right over that, but I kinda liked having that there. Okay, so that adds a little bit of interest to the back of our card, and that's where you put your message there, you write your message back there. So you can see how cute that's gonna jump off the page there. Okay, so we're gonna, Put that aside and this one actually is four inches tall and two and three quarters wide okay all ink pads are put away and now we're going to bring back um this whoop you can put this away here but i want to show you here because these are one and a quarter okay since these are one and a quarter our panels are going to be one so what i did is i thought it has to be four and a half inches tall, right? But then I'm gonna put a one inch, a one inch, and a two and three quarters. So if you take two and three quarters, plus one is three and three quarters, plus one is four and three quarters. So that's how I determined to do a four and three quarters. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to bring up our Stamparatus and we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna hinge stamp with a really big stamp. And this is that kind of birch tree here um, and it's taller but we're gonna hinge stamp I wanted to be able to hinge stamp and as you'll notice I put this in here this is the top of the trees and I pretty much put it over to the edge of the top of my Stamparatus and I put so if you're gonna do this and you want blue you're gonna have to remember to put the blue up towards the top of the trees Ask me how I know this. <laughs> so we are going to use soft suede and we are going to ink up. I'm just going to put an ink pad under there for give me some stability. I'm going to do some soft suede on my trees. Like I said, this is the top of the trees. This is the top of the sky. Make sure we've got all of our trees inked and we're going to keep that up in the corner there and we're going to press down and get those little branches. And we're seeing these pretty trees through that sunset. And then we're gonna lift this up. Photopolymers tend to stick there, so you just kind of put it back in. Just That's why I like to start up in the corner. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hinge down. Now we're gonna go down to where we know we're gonna catch the bottom part of this. So. As we're hinging, we're not hinging here because that's gonna, so we go down to this. You hinge down where you can see you're gonna have new, you go, we started in one, we went one, two, went to the third hinge, okay? Now I'm gonna put my ink pad under here. Lift this up so you guys can see it. There we go. And then we're gonna ink it up again. You can use, you can use a, an, a stamp case or an ink pad to give you some a flat surface under your acrylic plate on the Stamparatus. Okay, make sure that's up in the corner and then we're just gonna stamp down and catch this bottom part of our panel. Okie dokie, I think we got it. And once again, like I said, it's gonna, and then you have some mess here. So make sure when you pull this off, you don't slide it in there. You can do that. I'm going to get my 
Stampin' Simply Chamois here, my chamois clean off this space here. Okay, get this all cleaned off. This really needs some deep cleaning here. It's a good idea to keep all of your um, all of your tools clean. And boy, I just need a deep cleaning. If it's not enough that I have to deep clean the whole rest of the house, now I gotta deep clean my stamps. But that's just part of the job. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is the cabin. Now, the nice thing about our Stamparatus, you've got two sides, you've got four places, you can put another plate here, so you can literally keep using this over and over on the same card. Sometimes I'm making a couple different cards and I have like pieces everywhere. But I was able just to mount my cabin here. Now, if you look at this card, the cabin is over on this side. So I put the cabin so that it would be on this side and I'd have more space over here on the right side. Now, the, what I did here is I took a five and a quarter inch piece here, okay? Now my little mat here. When you buy the Stamparatus, it comes with a black foam mat and you can upgrade to this grid. And I do suggest upgrading to this grid piece. I mean, it's uh, like six bucks or something like that. It's nominal there, but it's a really nice addition there. So I'm gonna put in a two and a half inch high and a five and a quarter because this card closes to fit to a five and a half inch width. And so I went ahead and went with this border here on the side and I went from this corner to this corner and that's five and a quarter. Okay, so then you're just gonna put that in there and then you'll ink up your cabin. Pop that back in there for me. And just make sure you catch all of the edges of that image on the cabin because it's kind of a distinctive stamp. So it tends to have a lighter image on it there around the edge. Now you do not have to have the this mat in here when you're using it's actually used the mat is used for photopolymers that are thinner but I went ahead and just stuck it's it doesn't hurt the stamp to do that but technically you can because there's foam on your red rubber you do not need this here so if you get your stamp around do not throw away that black piece thinking it's just packaging material I had two people in my stamping up career say oh I threw that away I thought it was packing material I'm like no 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 <laughs> they ended up upgrading to this which was good um, okay so we have our cabin and it's it's skewed off to the left and then what we're gonna do is just go over to our Stamparatus and we're gonna use our cabin dies. Now remember how awesome those cabin dies. You can cut out trees and snowflakes and a fence and another cabin there that's not the stamped cabin. So it's a really cute set. Um, so we're just gonna go over to our um, Big Shot and we're gonna maybe tape a little bit of this down so that it stays in place in our Big Shot or Stampin' Cut and Boss Machine or whatever die cut machine you have. And you're just going to make sure you see a little edge of ink. So um, that'll run through your die cutting machine. And by the magic of video, ha, one is already done for us. So what I'm gonna do is just clean off my stamp here. There we go. And we'll put our trusty Stamparatus down here and we're gonna bring our card out. Okay, so we have, this is our back, here's our card, we've got our cabin, and now we're going to learn how to cut this because the one thing you wanna do is, remember I, I kind of worked backwards of how much I needed, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut an inch off this side and an inch off this side, which will leave you the two and three quarters in the middle. So just make sure you cut it that way, okay? So on the left side, it's gonna be cut at one. So just put your left side at one at the top on the left side of your cutting groove, and we're gonna cut that one inch, okay? Then our other one, we are gonna cut to one inch off of the right side. So see, now they stay in order. Okay, so I'm just going to do that to get it out of my trimmer, but this isn't a hard, hard um, puzzle to put back together again. Okay, 
So I was wondering actually if I would like to put some scattered leaves on here. This stamp set, Welcoming Woods, is really cool because it has these leaves here and I think they actually might look kind of cute falling down there. So we're gonna do it on this card. So I'm going to, and I think you just, oh darn, you know what I did? I don't think I'm gonna do it because I already cut them apart. Or could I? I don't know. I wanted to maybe see if I like that. I think we could maybe still do it. Um, we could put them together. Put one here, put them back together. So do this beforehand. <laughs> but I thought it would give a little more dimension to the card. So we're just going to ink up the leaves and just have them kind of falling. Oh, I'm almost scared to do it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Well, it's only a piece of paper. Okay, let's put some leaves down. Okay, maybe some leaves falling down over here. Ah, and I'm just kind of creating the shadow. It's really pretty because you can You can actually do these in um, like say a Merlot and you could do them in pumpkin pie and daffodil and you can kind of push them kind of. Let's put one here. You could make all kinds of different colors, but since I'm kind of creating that um, sunset look where you're kind of seeing the shadows, I think that looks okay. There we go. So you'll see the photos on my blog I'll have a photo and you can see which one you like better. Okay, so now we're gonna put these on our panels. So let's get, make sure our branches are going the right way. I'm going to get some of my Tombow glue and put my middle one in. Little glue here. I can squiggle here because I'm not writing on there. Ha ha. And we're just going to put a nice 1 8 inch border on the top, bottom, left, and right. There we go. We'll put this panel on here. You could use designer series paper here to, as well on a bridge fold card. But I decided, of course, I wanted to do this sponging technique. I've been wanting to play with this welcoming woods. You don't know how many times I've had it on my desk, put it away, went to another idea, and finally I said, darn it, I'm doing it. Even though we're starting to get into the uh, Pittsburgh winter, not fall. And of course, Florida is just all, okay, let's get this little guy to cooperate with me. Don't want it crooked there, especially on that border on the that side there okay now we want to stamp on here and what I did here is I just stamped hello friend okay so I'm just gonna little taps with my ink pad and then it fits in here because I did I, I knew that it was gonna be two and a half and when you go and you stamp this up towards the top that fits in there so then we're just going to I'm going to go ahead and use some of my uh, stamp and seal here. And I know I have about an inch to work with on that so each side. So I'm just going to put some stamp and seal there. And if any of it falls over, you just kind of pop it over there. Then I'm just going to put it right down here in the corner on the left side. Then I'm going to close up the card and it's going to reach over. Do you know what I think? Oh, I oh, do you know what I think I did? Did I did I do that right? No, it's not. I I think I cut this to five and a half. I think it's supposed to be five and a quarter. Let's measure it and see. Hmm, this might cause us a little predicament. Why? Look at that. It's a little too long. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of thinking here because I already stamped this and I don't, okay, so I'm just gonna get it 
teeny incy bincy bincy bit. Let's go to five and a quarter. Just take a little bit. A little bit off of there. Okay, got a little edge there and oh gosh. So remember, make this five and a quarter. I think I said that and then I cut it at five and a half. Okay, now I think it's a little too hard to cut with our trimmer. So let's see if this is gonna fit now. Don't wanna put it down too tight. Okay, so I'm going to do a little surgery here. Cut that straight with my big scissors. Now let's see if that's gonna go. Let's see if it's gonna fit. Need just a tiny bit more. Oh, thank goodness I gave myself enough room on this side. There we go. Where there's a will, there's a way, huh? When you make a lot of mistakes, you get good at knowing how to fix them. That's a good thing. <laughs> and that is my definite <laughs> MO is, okay, how can I mess this up? So just kind of play with it by pushing it down on the score lines. Use your bone folder. Then it closes nicely, fits in, like I said, fits into the A2 sized card. Do some burnishing here. There we go. Really simple on that front because I didn't want to put anything to take away from the top of the card. I do like the leaves on there. I'm happy I did that. So I'm going to turn it over and that's where we're going to put this, but I decided to go ahead and put a happy birthday on this card. So happy birthday, little, little stamps little taps and then I just decided to put happy birthday down here at the bottom and I think sponging on there kind of just gave it a nice visual on the back there so let's put a little bit here and put that on the back and that's the same size as the middle one so it's two and three quarters wide and four inches high then you have that nice early espresso border around, whoop. Glue gives you wiggle room for sure. So just pop that up so that I have the same amount of space on the top and the bottom and the left and the right. There we go. So happy birthday, hello friend. And there you go. You use the peaceful cabin with the welcoming woods. I finally got this one. Oh my gosh, I love this stamp set. Um, and what's really cute on this too is it has the ground that you can stamp in between. It fits right in between these, the bottom of the trees where the, um, the trunk is. And so you can pop that right into that. And it has a good luck. Every season brings its own one. These um, snowflakes will look beautiful embossed over those trees as well. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. You can ask me questions on the YouTube description, uh, YouTube comments as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you, ah, would like to text me or call me, you can do 724-323-2296. I like to post a video on Wednesdays and usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have a card posted for you. So make sure you subscribe to not only my YouTube channel, but also my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.